Before we start, a quick heads up for Club 1999ers. I continue to include your email addresses in our new platform in Google Groups. I'm now at number 640 something. Yeah, I have about 300 and something to go. I'm getting there. In fact, I hope to complete this process before the end of the year. But in case I haven't gotten to you yet, and you have not yet received my weekly intelligence briefings, number 42, just shoot me an email at youmissthis at gmail.com and I'll send it to you. Okay? Now, also, our period to make contributions towards the Kumekucha brand is coming to an end. Yeah, we have just two more days. So if you've not yet done something and you wanted your purpose to support us, to support me and the work I do, then uh, you need to act fast. And I've included all the details, payment details, on your screens. I've also repeated them in the description area below this video on YouTube. Yeah, so you don't have a problem looking for what to do. Thank you very much in advance. And even those who have already responded, thank you very much. God bless you abundantly. Right, let us get down to today's business. You can be sure that there are many Kenyans who have grown old waiting for a Raila Odinga presidency. And it would seem for Raila Odinga, winning an election winning a presidential election, is not a problem. The huge issue has been ascending to the presidency. Yeah, because many times he has won the election. Somebody else has been sworn in, the loser. But that is the nature of politics. You see, politics is not democracy. <laughs> because even now, there are many in the United States of America who believe yeah, that there are some powerful people who want to swear in the loser of those elections. Yeah, that's the opinion. That's what they believe. And this is the most powerful nation on earth. Yeah, the bedrock of democracy. Politics is not democracy. Anyway, there are those Raila Odinga supporters right now who already see yeah, Raila in State House. And of course, supporters of the Deputy President don't see that. <laughs> they see something very different. Yeah, they see their man in State House. Anyway, what would a Raila Odinga presidency look like? Now, in the case of this gallant Kenyan, yeah, and a great Kenyan in my opinion, there's plenty of evidence Plenty of pointers yeah, that should clearly point us to what a Raila Odinga presidency will look like. To sum it all up very neatly, he would be the people's president. The common man in Kenya will be very powerful. Yeah, and please let's be careful here. I'm not talking about you. You're not the common man. And neither am I talking about myself. Because I believe we're in the middle class. And a Raila presidency yeah, would give the middle class <laughs> a few sleepless nights. You see, in some instances, the interests of the common man clash with those of the middle income people. I will give you a quick example. We have seen many times in Kenya, water, yeah, limited water resources, diverted away from slum areas into middle-income estates. In a Raila presidency, that would not happen. But by far, the group of Kenyans that will have the most sleepless nights are the rich, Wenye Inchi, <laughs> the powerful, the cartels, those... <laughs> would have many sleepless nights. Let me give you a concrete example. During the first 
early years of the Mwai Kibaki government, Raila Odinga was the Minister for Roads, the Kibaki cabinet. And a decision was made yeah, to clean up this issue of road reserves because people had encroached into these road reserves. People had been allocated plots that were bang in the middle of road reserves. And many politicians would have cowed, would have been terrified would have shrunk away from the responsibility yeah, of overseeing this reclaiming of road reserves, not railer. In many instances in Kenya, you can have a problem like this one, where you've bought a plot in a road reserve, you've built a very expensive mansion costing tens of millions or even hundreds of millions. And a bulldozer is about to bring it down. And you'd have picked up the phone, made a few calls, and those calls would have reached the minister in charge. And that demolition would have been cancelled on the spot. That doesn't work with rail. Those Kenyans who were around at the time will remember <laughs> that more than a few house owners were admitted to hospital. Yeah, with blood pressure issues. <laughs> and others even lost their lives. Yeah, you know, when you put so much investment into something and it's all brought crashing down and you're told you no longer own that plot you thought you owned. <laughs> it's not a small matter. But this did not stop Ray Lodinga. He had an objective, he had a mission, he had been given a job, and he did it without ceasing. Without any hesitation, or without favoring anybody. If the people of Kenya were to give Raila Odinga a job, they would be sure it will get done. And whether you like Raila Odinga or not, that is the truth. He has a very clear track record to prove that. And that is why very many powerful people in Kenya, the rich, the influential, are terrified of a Raila Odinga presidency. Have always been terrified of a Raila Odinga presidency. Yeah, they have good reason. You see, Kenyans are very interesting people. Kenyans are desperate. They want change. But the truth is, they also don't want change. <laughs> because the question I would pose is, yes, you Kenyans want change. But are you prepared for that change? I don't think so. Kenyans love shortcuts. Kenyans love to bend the law to their advantage. Kenyans love to make calls yeah, and get things done which are illegal. And Kenyans are experts at manipulating people in position of authority, people who have power to do certain things. Allow me a brief story. My late political lecturer used to have a habit that I never understood for decades. Yeah. For decades, I thought, what's wrong with my dad? What's wrong with this old man? Does he have a trauma situation from his past? Or what is the issue? You see, he would enter a pub for a drink. And then somebody would send over a drink to him. And he would always react very badly. What he'd do if it was too late to send the drink back? He would accept the drink and then tell the waiter, give that person who sent you these drinks, two drinks. And then he would hurriedly finish his drink or even leave it there and walk out of that pub. I never understood why. Decades later, the mystery was solved. You see, 
in a position of authority within the police, everybody wanted to get to know him. Yeah. And many of his colleagues had fallen into this trap. Somebody sends you a drink or two. Later on, they join you. They buy all your drinks. They send you gifts later. Yeah, expensive gifts. And then one day, they turn up at the police station. And they say, how are you, my friend? So-and-so has been arrested. Can you please assist? I want him out of police cells immediately. Yeah, he has got important issues to deal with. And that policeman would have a problem because he owed this person. He owed them drinks. He owed them expensive gifts, which they would have liked to keep on receiving. And therefore, they would look for a way to bend the law. Release a dangerous criminal, for instance. And so the rule, very strict rule of my political lecturer, was don't owe anybody anything. Because the minute you start owing people is the minute you will not be able to do your job. Now this example extends to virtually every area in Kenya. You are a cabinet minister. You are an important government official. You yeah, can give favors. You work in immigration, for instance. Yeah, and you sign for people to receive passports. And you owe this foreigner a lot of favors. Yeah, and therefore you bend the law and issue a passport to a foreigner. Somebody who is not a Kenyan. You issue them with a Kenyan passport. Anyway, back to my point. Kenyans are gurus at manipulating people in positions of authority and power. And therefore, the same Kenyans cannot say they want change. Yeah, because that change has to start with them. Yeah, are they ready to do everything straight like a ruler? To do everything in strict accordance to the laws of the land? I don't think so. Deep in the heart of most Kenyans, the law applies to other people. The law applies only when they are not at a disadvantage. But as soon as they are in trouble, <laughs> the law has to be bent, manipulated in their favor. Yeah, and Kenyans are masters of the game at this. And this is the reason why, I believe, many Kenyans will not be prepared for Raila Odinga presidency. Even though, if you ask them now, they are very prepared. They want Raila Odinga in state house like yesterday, as soon as possible. In my view, the Raila Odinga deep state <laughs> would be deadly. Now, I'm sure most of you remember the story of the men in black who disrupted an ODM nomination process yeah, that for some reason did not favor the party leader. You see, this Kenyan politician has support that is fanatical. His supporters are fanatics. <laughs> that is a fact. And although... I don't think a Raila Odinga deep state would be involved in murder and bumping off people. All clear indicators so far point to the fact that you would not want to be on the wrong side of a Raila Odinga deep state. Yeah, because you could get injured very badly. Very bad things could happen to you if you are tempted to cross certain lines. However, to be fair to Raila, I don't think there's any other politician, yeah, unless you correct me, who is more tolerant yeah, to political views and opinions that are different from his. Don't forget that Raila Odinga is the only top contender for the presidency, is the only person who has expressed interest in the presidency, 
who fully supports a parliamentary system. Indeed, if he had his way, Kenya would be a parliamentary system. And you know what a parliamentary system is? It is a messy debate yeah, with different, very different views being thrown in all the time. William Samoy Ruto's deep hatred, dislike for parliamentary system came out very clearly yeah, during the Naivasha talks that led to our current constitution. Ruto believes in giving one Kenyan all the power to make all the decisions or as many decisions as possible. In his view, that is how you get things moving. But with a parliamentary system, according to Ruto and many others, you'll get nothing done. Now, in my view, from observing the career of Raila Odinga for decades, his greatest weakness is putting too much trust in people who are loyal to him. We have seen this happening so many times. And then when the mess is created, yeah, Raila Odinga is left cleaning it up alone. And it doesn't help that Raila is no longer a young man. You know, as you get older, you slow down. Yeah, you're slower to detect problems. You're slower to detect your people, people who have appointed to important positions, messing up. And finally, and I know this is going to be very controversial, yeah, but I believe it is true, Raila Odinga is the least tribal presidential candidate Kenya has ever had. We used to have another politician in Kenya, yeah, whom my late political lecturer greatly admired, called Tomboya. Tomboya was so much of a nationalist, was so blind to tribe, that his own people started hating him. And many of his own people did not even consider him a law. Indeed, I've said in my landmark series, yeah, titled Tomboya, it was more than an assassination. I have said that Tomboya became a law after his death. Otherwise, when he lived, he was not a law. Actually, a Suba law. Yeah, Subas are even Bantus. Yeah, but that's a story for another day. And of course, this had a lot to do with Tomboya's upbringing. He was brought up in the colonial sisal plantations in Thika, in a place called Kilimambogo. Yeah, there were no laws there, very few laws there. He mixed with many other communities, especially the Kikui community. He was elected in Nairobi. Yeah, and the voters hailed from every corner of the republic. Indeed, this is one of the main reasons why he never saw eye to eye with Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Raila's father, yeah, who believed Mboya had lost his roots. Raila has grown up all over the place, and indeed all over the world. And I believe that has greatly influenced his thinking yeah, and his views on many issues. Now I welcome your views yeah, on what a Raila Odinga presidency would look like. I believe I've been very fair, yeah, and if there are any negative points I've left out, feel free to include them in the comments area below. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.